So this is a quick demonstration of using um, VS Code to compile and edit and um, debug uh, AM32. And so what I've got is uh, the little AM2, AM32 here. Um, I've got a I've got a pull request. Um, uh, let's see. dot com slash tridge. AM32 and um, so uh, I've opened a little pull request against the the project which is what I'm running at the moment so that's this PR here it's a bit rough but um, it you know, should work uh, one of the things it's got is a link here to this Windows tools that's a collection of all of the tools you need to run this stuff on Windows just saves a bit of hassle going and installing it and um, all that does is um, if you go and have a look in uh, the directory, you just got to unpack that into uh, the AM32 tools windows and it unpacks in there a copy of make and a copy of the compiler. That's just to save a little bit of hassle installing those. Um, so, uh, so what, let's let's show how it works. Okay, so we've got the source code here, and what I'm going to do is just make a, a tiny change to the code here, and I've told it what target I want to build. I can pick from all the different targets. These are automatically parsed out of the make file, so it works out what targets are available, or you can just choose the all target. In my particular case, um, I'm choosing the Foxair F421 because that's the ESC that I've got sitting on my desk. Um, I've set up a little parallel make thing that does an eight way parallel build. So if you're building all the targets, it builds them uh, eight at a time, which saves a bit of bit of time. Don't have to go off for a cup of tea when you are doing a build. So um, now I've done that, I can tell it to go and build it and it does the usual, it calls into the make file and it builds it and there's our flash size, et cetera, as per usual. Um, we can actually just bypass the build step and jump straight to the debugger. So uh, the debugger setup I've got here, uh, that's in here. I've got a tool called Cortex Debug. So I should have shown at the beginning the extensions you need. So you need the C, C++ extension. You need the Cortex Debug extension, which is really handy for debugging, um, you know, Cortex M4, M0, et cetera, targets and this make file tools. So they're the main things you need. You can install a whole bunch of other things, you know, GitHub Copilot and other stuff to suit um, what you feel like, but they're the main extensions you need to play around with AM32. All right, so debug. So as I showed you in that launch here, um, if you're, uh, this whole setup works on both Linux and Windows. There's one line you need to edit in this file if you want to use Linux instead of Windows. That's this line here. I haven't yet worked out how to make it auto select the right debugger for Linux versus Windows. So if you're on Linux, you have to uncomment this line and comment out that line. And my apologies, and I'm, I should say, I've only for the very first time in my life installed VS Code yesterday. So I am a raw beginner. And uh, more experienced people, I'm sure, will tell me how I should make it automatically adapt to Windows in here. All right, so back to the debugging. Uh, so let's go and go to the little debugger tool, and we're going to load and debug this code. So that's going to load it now on the um, on the little M4. And you can see there's a rather cool, I'm using um, the J-Link debugger here and I've turned on the live watch capability. It means we can actually watch variables live. So I've added a few variables here. So I'll, I'll just go and delete, well, I'll stop the debugger um, and then I'll go and delete, you know, um, I don't know, and you can add a new variable. So I'll add in the ERPM like that, which is a global variable. So that's now a watched variable. So when we launch the debugger here, then we get a live update of these variables. So there's the actual current and the battery voltage and the ERPM, et cetera. 
So uh, if I show it's working, pop over to Betaflight. Again, excuse my ignorance, such things. I'm an ArduPilot developer. I very rarely use the Betaflight tool, so I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. But anyway, I go here. I can see that it's got the temperature. I've actually only got one ESC because I'm too lazy to have sold it up. The software debug pins for all four ESCs on this four-in-one, so it actually only shows the first ESC. And uh, so there it is. I've got the RPM, et cetera, and the temperature. And you can see that they're updating live in the debug tool here. So the battery voltage and the RPM, et cetera, updating live, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, you can, of course, go and set um, you know, breakpoints. I can just tell it to pause. I can go and say, hey, I want a breakpoint here and continue. And it should then start, uh, it's not running the motors, so it's not gonna stop there until I actually run the motors again. So let's go and run the motors and uh, let's try and demand a non-zero. Uh, why hasn't it, maybe it isn't hitting that line of code. Should have stopped there. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I think it's because step assign isn't zero. Um, so that would be why that's not jumping in there. Okay, so um, so that's basic thing. It's the usual sort of, um, if I you know pause here, you can look at variables just by hovering over the variable. And so that D shot frame time is 3136. Uh, DMA buffer is this great big array. Um, you know, all the usual sort of features you get in debuggers. So hovering over variables, or you can look at variables up here. It takes a little while to refresh over JLink to bring up all the globals. AM32 does love the global variables. So, and a lot of global variables there. You can of course look at the local variables and things and you can look at all the registers. So poke around at that level. Um, what else can you do? That's, I mean, that's the basic features. Um, and should be enough to, to keep you busy. Exactly the same thing all works on uh, Linux, um, command line or in VS Code on Linux. Um, it does mean that I've had to play some silly buggers in the make file to make it work on both Linux and Windows. So you'll see that um, in the make subdirectory, if you feel like diving into that, then um, there is a, uh, where is it? Sorry, I'm normally an Emacs user. So finding my way inside here is always hard. Let's see, I thought I had a tools.mac in there. Uh, I do I'm sure, but for some reason not seeing it there. So anyway, I've got a little uh, thing in the make file that um, uh, that um, basically selects the right um, uh, right sort of definition for things like copy and stuff. So um, if I search for Mukdur, actually, I should be able to find it. There it is. Okay. So this is it in tools.mk in the make directory. I've got this thing where, you know, if you're on Windows, then it goes and, and mucks around with your SDK prefix, sets up a directory separator, copy and shell and that sort of thing. And then if you're on Linux, it does the appropriate thing. Um, so um, if you're trying to work out, you know, if you're, somebody tries to make this work on, on Mac OS, for example, this is your first spot you jump into and, and whatever the OS is on Mac OS, presumably Mac OS, then you'd put some appropriate statements in here. So that's about it. Um, it's got all the usual things like Git integration. Uh, so you can you stage source code, um, do pull requests, et cetera. Um, and uh, seems to be, you know, a reasonable editor, not a patch on Emacs, of course, but, you know, not everyone understands the, the coolness of Emacs. Uh, so for those of you used to IDEs, hopefully this will be useful. So um, enjoy. <laughs>